In this video, I just want to give you an overview of the field actions that we have in Macanta. So under automation, we have our field actions. So I just want to go through the list here. So round robin um, does what it says. So it allows you to assign a relationship um, to a um, contact for a data object um, based on a round robin. So all you need to do here is you set in that it's a round robin, you choose the correct relationship, and then you go in and say, okay, which relationship is it that I want to use here? And you then say which contacts um, you want to use by having their contact IDs comma separated. To get the contact IDs for the contacts you want to use, you can just look at the URL. So here it says 1311. So that's one of the ones that I've used in here. So you just go to your user contacts, note down the contact IDs and put them in. And that'll then assign the first one, then the next one, then next, next, next. Go back to the start for each data object that comes past. Then the next available number, again, is just um, your result field that you go and choose. If I go and choose companies and I say next available number, I can then choose my relationship and I then say, where do I want to track this? So that would be like an ID number or it could be a job number and it's the next available one across the system. So it's not that we're just counting for this one contact or data object, it's across the system, what's the next available number to use. Number date is just where we say, okay, I want to get the date of the first Friday of the month. Um, and I can merge value in, so I can either say the first um, Friday of July every time or I can say the first Friday and then I can bring a date in and say okay whatever the month is in that date I want to know what the date of the first Friday of that month is so it's good for recurring dates where you can say okay billing happens on the last Friday of the month or anything like that and then you choose which field do you want the result to be put in again that this would be a date field and that would be a date field Zero data does just that. You just go in and say, okay, when this runs, what I want to do is I want to clear these values for whatever reason. It might be for calculations, it drives other automation, whatever it may be, but we'll then clear those field values. And again, that is for the particular data object that you've chosen. Humanize the dates just takes a date and puts it into a human friendly um, format. So rather than just being the um, uh, 060779, it'll say that it's the 6th of July, 1979 for that. Time difference fields allows you to say what's the date in this field, what's the date in that field, and then give you the result in another field. So for tracking, when stages change in opportunities or deals or marketing, anything like that, you can say how long did it take to go from point A to point B. Next birthday, so if you store someone's date of birth, and you can use this for other um, things as well, for renewals, anything like that, because of course you might know that my date of birth is the 6th of July 1979, but that doesn't tell you exactly when my next birthday is. Now my next birthday now, today, is um, in a few weeks on the 6th of July, but if you were to then check what's my, ne what's my next birthday on the 7th of July, it would be a whole full year ahead and you want to calculate that date because perhaps you want to run a campaign based on my next birthday, not my date of birth. Um, and again, you can choose the format um, in here and we explain here what format you can express that value in and what the result field will be. How old, how long is again, um, you give a date, so this will be a date field, and then you say, I want to know how many years in months, how many years, months, days, how many days, 
excuse me, or how many days, just the number, has it been since that date? And then we write that into the result. Then we also have the action counter, and that just counts incrementally. It sees the value that's in a field, a, a whole number, and it'll add one to it. So that's per data object and not across the whole system. Ticket number is very much like the next available number, but it allows you to set up a start number, a prefix. So this works well for rec um, quote references, job references, project numbers, things like that. And then where do you want to put it in? So you can say, for instance, ME1, and I want to start at 1001. Um, sorry, I did that the wrong way around. 1001, the prefix is going to be ME1, um, ME there. So then what it will do is the first number will be 1001, so ME hyphen 1001, and then 1002, and it'll count that way with that prefix in. Um, then division, multiplication, subtraction, and addition is just value 1, value 2, and the result. So those are your field actions that you have at the moment that you can use throughout your automation.